Hello, welcome back to my very rare yet simple tutorial on color grading. This time I'm going to be discussing about how to grade your footage to look professional that is shot using just by a smartphone camera. This year, we can see some interesting advancement going on with the smartphone filming like HDR video recording by Apple's iPhone and even 8K resolution video recording by certain models of Android phones. I recently received the latest Mi 10T Pro by Xiaomi, which can shoot up to 8K 30fps. But in today's video, I want to see how far I can go with their 4K video that can shoot up to 60fps, since I can do a nice slow motion from it. I think the smartphone technology is really catching up to replace those professional cinema cameras. No chat, but it's getting there, closer and closer. With a good editing and color grading, you can really turn your footage from your smartphone to look professional. So I'm gonna be playing the same video that was played earlier, but without the color grading, just straight from the camera so that you guys can see the difference. And then we're gonna be jumping straight into the color grading tutorial inside DaVinci Resolve. So I'm now on Resolve. I really do recommend you guys to use this software, especially for color grading. Number one, because it's very powerful, it's being used in professional level, and number two, it's free. I mean, they have the free version and the paid version, but the free version is really good enough for you to do some amazing color grading. Anyway, these are some original footages I shot using the smartphone, um, Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. I shot it on 4K 60fps so that I can do some slow motion down to 40% at 24fps, which is the standard for cinema. What I'm trying to do now is to color grade this original footage shot using just a normal inexpensive Android smartphone and try to get the look of film. So I screenshot some scene from movies like Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon and Robin Hood which obviously shot using very expensive cinema cameras. Alright, so this is the original look straight from the camera of Mi 10T Pro. I shot this just using the native recorder 4K 60p. So I put it all together in the timeline together with a screenshot from the movie to be used as reference for my color grading. So let's jump straight into the color panel. Alright, so now in the color panel, I'm gonna be grading this footage and maybe use this shot as reference. So what I can do now is to first select this original footage and then by pressing Ctrl or Apple key, I click the reference clip, right click on it and choose shot match to this clip. So automatically now, the original footage has the same look and color as the reference clip. This is a quick way to get a cinematic look when you have a reference but it's just a starting point. Of course, we're gonna do some adjustment here and there to make it look really good. The reason why I choose these specific scenes because it has similar background. They all have human subject and some trees, some forests as the background. All right, so let's turn off the clip window and do some enhancement for this shot. Usually when I have shots of people's face, I would try to smooth their skin so having that in mind, I'm going to create a new node. I go to the window, choose the circle, start adjusting the size and position. Trying to match the face because now I want to isolate the face. So once it's all done, I'll go to the tracker and start tracking forward. And Resolve will automatically track the face. Once it's done, I'm going to smoothen the skin, go back to the color wheel and start adjusting the mid-tone detail. Drag it to the left towards negative. It depends on your footage. Usually I will trust my own eyes, but in this case, I see somewhere around 73 to 74 will do just fine. Now we have a very smooth skin, 
but we are losing some sharpness on the edge as well. So let's try to get back some details on the edge by going to the blur tab and reduce the radius to get slightly sharper edge. If you reduce too much, it will look weird on the edge. So just reduce it slightly to around 0.8 is fine. So we can see the difference now if I turn off and if I turn off only this node, you can see the difference on the skin before and after. Now back to the color wheel, I will do some adjustment. Maybe darker on the gamma, brighter on the lift. And increase the gain, but try not to touch the top line here on the histogram. If not, you will start losing details on the highlight. Alright, maybe darker here and brighter here. Slightly more maybe. Alright now, so the before and after. Before and after. Before and after. Um, next, I think I will darken the background here. So what I can do now is to create the outside node. Right click here and choose outside node. Now with the outside node, if I adjust the gain here, for example, I can actually darken only the background without affecting the face of the subject. So I'll adjust the rest just by looking at the footage, trusting my own eyes, without looking too much on the histogram. Okay, something like that. Maybe not too much. And maybe I can adjust the tint, play around with the temperature, and I can play around with the luminosity, saturation. And I can play around with the luminosity saturation graph. So, the before and after. Before and after. Once I'm done with all this, I will do one final adjustment on the whole footage. So, I'll create a new node, and this node will adjust the look of the whole thing. So, for this one, maybe I increase the gain, adjust the gamma, the leaf. So now you can see the whole image has more contrast. Then I'll go here and I will move this point all the way down here as well. Maybe a bit here. So for example, not too much. Okay. So if you can see now, if I turn off this, you can see the shadow here is too saturated. And if I turn it back on, the shadow area will be less saturated, which is better. So in just a few minutes, I managed to turn the footage into something like this. From here, if you can see the original footage, it looks flat. It doesn't really focus on the subject's face, but once we turn this back on, you can see the difference. So this is the before and this is the after. Okay, so the same thing what we can do, let's say for this shot and, and then we have the next shot, this shot and this shot. So here what I'm gonna do is, I'll right click on it and grab still. So if I go to the gallery, the still is already here. So if I click on this clip, and if I right click here and apply and apply grade, now we have the same color grade. The same goes with this one. Now we have this. So let's work on this one. So this one looks a bit weird because of these two nodes. So I just click on it and delete them. So now we have these two nodes left before and after it's a bit too dark so back to the color wheel so i adjust the temperature and increase the gamma adjust the leaf back here so this is the before and after now it looks better 
Now on this node, lower the saturation. So now it looks quite nice. Before and after. Now to the next clip. The same goes here. Delete these two nodes. Or maybe I can just go back to this clip. Grab still. Go back here and apply grade. So before and after. Before and after. So this is basically how I get the look from the reference to this one, this and this. So let's just say if I want to get this kind of look and feel now using the same shot. Then I'm going to right click here and reset all the grids. And then exactly the same technique, I'm going to click here, press command and click here, right click and shot match. And now with just a click, we now have this look and feel perfect. So we now have almost similar background color and also the skin color. So the same thing again, make a new node. Go to the window, choose the circle again, and resize the position to cover the face of the subject. Once it's done, we can go to the tracker, and now I'm going to be playing backwards since we are now at the last frame. So I play backwards and let resolve track the face. Let me try to adjust a bit, maybe back here. Okay, that's fine. So what we're gonna do now is again, the mid-tone details, adjust it to somewhere around minus 73 maybe. Increase the sharpness slightly, 0.48, something like that. And then I'll increase the gain, play around here. And also I'm gonna adjust the temperature a bit to make the color pop out to make the color pop out slightly more. And then the luminosity saturation graph, increase, increase the color to make it pop even more. Bring down the, bring down the shadow part all the way down. Okay, maybe a bit here, back to the color wheel, increase the gain more and do some adjustment. Again, I'm just looking at the footage, trusting my own eyes, ignoring the histogram. Okay, so without and with the note. I think it looks better without and with the note. And once again, I'm going to add an outside note. And with this outside note, I'll decrease the gain, try to make it even darker. So with and without the note. So now we can see the face of the subject is really popping out and in focus now. So let's see the before where we can see the image looks really flat and this is the after. Looks much better. Now I'm gonna make another note to control the whole image. So I'm gonna adjust slightly to make it contrast just a bit more. And then again on the same luminosity and saturation graph Make the usual curve to make sure we don't have colors, especially on the shadow area. And slightly on the highlight. And lastly, let's play around with the temperature. Try to make it slightly cooler. Okay, so the before and after. Maybe a bit more adjustment. Slightly here and there. Alright, that should be okay. And let's see how far did we go. And this is the original shot. It looks flat. Everything is in focus. A very typical smartphone video. Into something like this. Very cinematic. The subject is really in focus. Easy for the eyes. So that's about it. I really hope you guys learned something valuable from watching this. If you have any questions, please leave it at the comment below. I'll do my best to answer it. Let's learn from each other and thank you so much. Peace be on you.